All right, welcome. Steve Holland here with Rapid Tech, uh, one of the brands at Ethos Skill. Let's go over. We're going to talk, or we're going to go over the Goodman model GKS tubular heat exchanger. Uh, just a reminder: all of these uh, videos that are on our Rapid Tech program, um, each one of these videos is part of that Rapid Tech heat exchanger certification. And remember, Rapid Tech is a nationally recognized certification program. Uh, so if you are entering the HVAC world and you want to join Rapid Tech, or if you are already working for a company or you're an owner and you want to get your technicians certified without sending them off to school, you can use our program. Super affordable. It's an excellent program. And uh, you know, I'm a 27-year veteran of the heating and air business. I go out, work on, on furnaces all the time. Um, I train technicians. So we're not just some polished up actor on a video trying to sell you something. Uh, you will love Rapid Tech. You'll love how it works. So let's go ahead and get into that video real quick. By the way, every single video that we do on heat exchangers or many of the other failures that we find, we not only video the, the, the uh, failure, but we photograph it. And in Rapid Tech, all the supporting documents are there that you can pull up right on your tablets or cell phones. You don't even need a tablet. Your cell phone is, you can watch these right on a cell phone. But you can also pull up all the uh, supporting documents. So you can pull that supporting document up, and it's got pictures of where to look for the failures. So it's right there. Let's go ahead and take a look, and uh, we'll watch the video, and then we'll do a quick recap. I took it all apart. Um, as you know, with Rapid Tech, uh, we break down every furnace that we possibly can to investigate. Uh, um, somebody in the shop called me the furnace detective the other day. I don't know if that's quite the right label, but... Uh, Let's go ahead and show you what I found. First things first, um, if you notice right here, some of you may notice this. What that tells me, that tells me that somebody may have bent the plenum, and the plenum may have started here and went to here, which means we restricted airflow on this entire section of this uh, heat exchanger. That could be, be why we found the problem that we found. Let me just show you what I discovered here. Okay. That's not good. There's a few reasons why that could have happened, and I think I figured out why. Um, I'll tell you, I don't know who installed this furnace. But there's clearly a problem with this tubular heat exchanger. Another area to look on this model, you want to look right down here. And if you see holes there, it can be a problem. Or you can even look down in this section. And that crimp, where they crimped and two bend the, uh, two, two bend the chamber. Let's go ahead and look down here. Let's see if we can get back in there. Let's see if we can put, see any pitting or holes. So here's a couple things that could be happening. One, if there's any pitting or holes that you find down in this lower section, okay, pitting or holes in that lower section, what's going to happen is, remember what we teach at Rapid Tech is that all condensing gas furnaces with an induced draft floor or a vent floor assembly, it's not really induced draft because it is actually the entire uh, venting process. The old Lennox Pulse had an induced draft where it actually induced it and started it, but these are really vent motors that are pushing the exhaust out. So what that means is this entire primary heat exchanger is under negative pressure. So if we start to draw air in any other holes, if we find holes, and that's where you're going to find them. If you're going to look and find pitting, you're going to find them down in here. And the reason that's happening is you're getting some condensation or you're condensing in the primary. And remember, any time you condense in a primary, that's bad. So if you're drawing air in there, you could get something like this to happen. Now, again, I don't know exactly why this happened. I've got my theories, and I'm going to share with you. Um, you know, that one's ready to bust through. Uh, that one's busted up. So let's look at one other thing, and then we'll recap. What I've discovered, and what I've been discovering on some of these models, is this gasket right here. If you look, see how that gasket on that coupler box they call this? This here is the coupler box. It connects the... Uh, connects the secondary and the primary together. But if you look down here at the bottom, what do you notice? Let's just check it here. See what I'm noticing? You're noticing 
leakage. See that? Leakage and possibly a breach. So if we're drawing air through that gasket, we could end up with this. So here's my summary of this particular chamber. Um, this particular chamber, my summary is this, or heat exchanger. Um, number one, the plenum may have been too small, so we could have had airflow problems, and we overheated the primary. Number two, we could have been overfiring the furnace. I have no idea what the gas pressure was set at. Number three, this is a big furnace. I have no idea what size return air drop or what size filter they had on it. Number four, that gasket could be leaking. All right, so we could have a number of different things. Here's the deal. As service techs out there, when you find these kinds of issues, don't just change the furnace. Investigate, check your static duct pressures, check your temperature rise. Make sure that your filters are sized according to the manufacturer's specs. And on maintenance, for those of you that are out there performing maintenance and repairs on these furnaces, don't just go in and do a repair. Make sure you do a full evaluation because you could change out a vent motor on this furnace or a capacitor or a circuit board and then find out a month later or two months later or a year later that you have a failed heat exchanger that you never checked. So start checking those, uh, those crimp ends and those tubes. Look for holes and pitting. That's a problem. Number two, check that gasket around that coupler box in the back. And if that gasket is leaking, uh, guess what? You have challenges. So that's a little bit uh, in the Rabbit Tech program, as you know, we cover why heat exchangers fail. And we'll talk about all of those, but uh, hopefully this helps you. This is the model GKS by Goodman. All right, so there you have it. Sorry about the sniffles in the video. I'm sure somebody will comment on that. Been beating a fight in a cold, but I'm not one of those guys that doesn't go to work because I have a cold. I work. I love doing what I do. Um, I love doing this stuff, by the way. This is awesome. Um, so let's just talk really quick. Let's let's just talk about what to look for. So any time, if you're a maintenance tech, if you're a repair tech out there, or if you're entering the HVAC trade, if you come across a furnace that has a tubular heat exchanger like this one, number one, check those crimps on those tube bends. You have to check all of them, and you have to look for very tiny holes. We're seeing it, and we're seeing lots of them. Um, one of the companies I own, we probably change out... On an annual basis, we probably change out north of 100 heat exchangers a year or even more. So make sure you're checking those two bends. Check that gasket behind the furnace. You have to have the correct tools to do it, but check that gasket because if that gasket is rotted out or leaking, there could be a problem. The other thing, every single demand call or no heat call and every single maintenance call, you need to check your temperature rise, your static duct pressures, your gas pressures, your delta T's, make sure that your filter sizes are compliant with the manufacturer's specs. Uh, those are the things to check. Now, possible causes. In this particular model, we could have had a high static duct pressure problem as a result of a couple of things. One, undersized plenum. Two, it could have been too small of a return. Three, it could have been too small of a filter or lack of maintenance where the filter was was not being changed off not often enough. And also, be really careful with some of these filters with the high MERV ratings. They're too air restrictive. Throw your manometers or check that, check that pressure drop across some of these filters today. You're going to find out that they're, they're too restrictive. So what you do in that case is if you want to install a good filter on a furnace, oversize the filter. You can never go wrong oversizing the filter. And by the way, I always recommend, if you can, bottom mount returns. Bottom mount return is the best on any furnace today with a large filter. All right, back to possible causes. Too high of gas pressure. Um, that could be an issue. You know, you start running into higher gas pressures, um, you're going to see problems like this. The other thing that I didn't mention in the video, uh, vent piping. So let's just say that each one of those items we talked about, let's just say a little bit of it's a problem or a little bit of it is out of spec. Maybe the venting's a little too small. Maybe the ductwork's a little too small. And maybe it's just a little bit. Well, guess what? That all adds up to create a major failure. So that's all you need to know about that model GKS heat exchanger. Just check those check those items. And I think you'll you'll do well for your customers. But but don't be lazy, guys. We're changing this industry through Rapid Tech. We're trying to change the industry and get technicians the proper real life experience training that they need 
so that when you go into a home to change an igniter or an inducer motor or a capacitor, you're also checking some of these other things. And you basically go from being a zero to a hero, right? Because um, some technicians out there, they don't check it. And when you start checking it, you're going to start to see, see the problems and you'll be able to bring it up and address it with your customers. And by the way, when you have a furnace that's on, that has the correct static duct pressure, correct filter, correct venting, correct gas pressure, you throw your combustion analyzer on there, you're going, to, you're going to give that customer exactly what they want. The comfort, right? You're giving them comfort. You're giving them efficiency. And you're giving them peace of mind and longevity out of a, out of a furnace. So last thing is, uh, my name is, again, Steve Holland. If you want to email me, it's ethoskill, E-T-H-O-S-K-I-L-L, -L, at gmail.com. Or you can call Scott at 866-992-1717. Um, if you'd like to join the Rapid Tech program, take the heat exchanger certification. And like I mentioned, Rapid Tech is a national, nationally recognized certification program. And uh, you'll love it. And the courses that we have available and what we have in store for 2017 and 2018 will blow your mind as technicians. So anyway, have a great evening. Thank you so much. And I look forward to uh, getting you some more videos.